not, it's very confusing how my brain, or maybe all human brains work. They're not consistent. At least mine is not. But the Suicide Squad had probably bigger stars and actors. Maybe you have Poster Syndrome, which is the more successful people you work with, the more hey. comfortable you feel. <laughs> oh. When you're not with successful people, you're like, oh man, like what am I doing, you know? Oh, Sean, look at this. I like this ego <laughs> bump. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Today we have Flula Borg. He's been on the uh, various different TV shows and films, Pitch Perfect 2, Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Conan Show, and The Suicide Squad. And he's also the third sexiest Bavarian male. Now, my first question to you is... Yes. Oh, I can speak. I thought I should be quiet. I can speak. Hi. Hello. <laughs> It's a free world. It's a free world. Um, FYI, guys, Flu lies in the, on his uh, closet right now. Looks to be yes. pretty, pretty big closet. You were kind of walking around before, but yeah, yeah. Well, I'm know. I'm out. This is the closet. I'm I'm cramming. You know, like in those movies where they're trying to clean their house and they throw everything into the closet. I'm now oh. I'm leaning against the door because if I leave Sean, everything will come flying out like elephants. Everything. Old in suitcases. <laughs> Hopes and dreams, everything comes out. <laughs> nice. If you have an elephant, that must be a pretty big closet for you, huh? That's big. Too. Well, it's a small elephant, to be fair, but yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. No harm to be called, you know, the, any, anyone that's in the animal field there. No, no. This, this elephant is treated very well. I feed it all of the carbohydrates it requires because it's a stuffed <laughs> animal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, my first question for you is, who is the first two sexiest North Bavaria male. Why, why are you the third? I refuse to give uh, those first two people their credits. I'm going to only say I'm the third sexiest North Bavarian male. I'm very excited to become first or second. I won't say how I will accomplish this. I'm not going to say if it's legal or illegal, but eventually <laughs> I will get there one way or another. Okay. I honestly, I'll be honest. I didn't even know what Bavarian meant. Like I, I had to look it up on Google. Like what, what, what is, what is Bavarian? It's just like a specific. Like It is. Yeah. Bavaria is uh, like, if you use a use American terms, it's like a state, like Germany has a bunch of states. Bavaria is one of those states, but Bavaria is also, we are known for our Lederhosen and our German Southern folk music and things like this, but it's a huge, huge state. So it's not just that stuff. It's also, you know, techno like me. Hello. <laughs> so were you born in that part of Germany then? Is that, I, I want to dig into the story of you. Like, cause I, I don't think a lot of people, obviously they've seen you in the interviews, but people don't really seem to have dug into kind of your upbringing and, you know, how you ended up in the U.S. and and really kind of the motivations that you have in terms of being the third sexiest North Bavarian male? Well, look, that that was just handed to me. I didn't compete. They just voted and I got third place and it should have been vote. first. Yeah, it was a vote. It's like a pageant, you know, there's like a beauty pageant, a sexy pageant. Um, and I, I placed third, which... Uh, you know, look, things, you can't place first in everything. And I'm actually happy. Well, I shouldn't win too many things. You shouldn't have a nice big head. I like being, being humbled. I'll eat all the humble pies you serve, Sean. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So um, talk to me a little bit about your, your upbringing. I mean, if someone wants to describe who Flula was like, what, what you were like in high school, let's say, you know, what, what would that response be? I was an awkward mishmash of many things. I was, sometimes I was like outgoing man. Other times I was uh, the, the uh, very quiet person that would eat lunch in the toilet, not inside the bowl, but you know, I would close the stall and have my sandwich in private. Um, just because, uh, you know, I was sometimes a very shy person. So I was, as they say, all over the mappies. 
uh, with my personality, I would be very public, very private, and just overall very confusing. And that remains my brand, which I'm happy about. You were shy, you said. Interesting. Oh, big time. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Huh. Yeah. And, and, and what, was the, what was the reason for that? It was, it was just something that you've... And then I guess you kind of had to get out of your shell ultimately, right? Because now you are certainly more outspoken and or is this more of like something that you choose to when it needs to be done for I think a, and stuff like that oh totally well i think many people who i i would say I, i'm a performer sometimes well as, as a job and many people i know that perform um it's not all the ways a hundred percent all the time but i think there are people like this i don't know jeff goldblum i imagine he is just uh, running 4,000 kilometers an hour in all of the directions all of the time. It seems like it, yeah. Right, yeah, but yeah. maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is also an illusion. I don't, I don't know. For me, I love to do this, but then I also, I'm a child with no siblings, so I, like, I really love it mm. when things are just quiet. Uh, I'm maybe inside this closet that I'm holding down. And, uh, you know, just like, that's what I, my memories as a child, I would beatbox in the closet because of the acoustics. It's nice and quiet. And I enjoyed this. And I spent many times just imagining strangeness and dopeness inside my mind. <laughs> I forgot you beatbox, right? Well, How I'm not good. Oh, well, terribly. But I'm, Can I'm, you I'm give like us a, a bit of a beat? Yeah. So uh, the thing with this is, I've, I, I was in Pitch Perfect 2 with one of the greatest beatboxers in the world, 85th. Uh, he does not really beatbox actively anymore, but I said, be honest, I'm like a C plus beatboxer. And he's like, yeah, B minus maybe. So like, Sean, I am not good. I am fine. I will adequately put down a beat for you. That's, that's, it was, that was more of like a B plus for me, but I'm pretty low okay. standards when it comes to beatboxing. So Great, I'll take it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, um, and then you grew up in, in Germany and, and were you taking acting classes when you were growing up or is that just something you just naturally developed growing up? I, I always, yeah, I did enjoy to perform. I was in like some theater, I would do some theater things. Uh, and then, um, I also studied, uh, nah, not studied. I was in an improv class in some classes. I was in a group and things, but mainly I was just trying things and doing all kinds of weird things. I would work at the Germanic national museum in Nuremberg as a knight. They would just put me in a night suit, but it was so heavy. I couldn't move. So I got pages to try to scare people while in a suit of armor, which was confusing. I would busk, I would play my posaune and my trombone in the streets just to try to make a few Deutschmarks. Shout out Deutschmarks, RIP. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. And what eventually, what, what, what got you into like hopping over from Germany into, into America? Like I imagine the, you always wanted to be an actor. Is that, was that kind of the mission for you or is just a performer yes. in general? You wanted to be out in front of the screens? I am, yes, I love, I mean, my tr dream was always to do acting in, in film and television was always my dream, but I'm not a normal person. So I would have some indirect, you know, ways to get into this was my only option. So this meant for me making strange YouTube videos because I was like, please, hey, America, this is like my megaphone to you. I would just make these videos and hope that someone heard my siren call. And, uh, and gave me a ringy dingy so they, you know, I, I could come back here and do something. So that was my hope. And I, I was first, my first big thing was I won a hype man contest that I did not intentionally want to try to win. And this was my What's first a hype man contest. Well, it's a, do you, do you know what a hype man is? No, I don't. Oh, okay. So a hype man, this? Google okay. it. So yeah, Google it. So okay. like, a hype man is, I think, mostly in hip hop, but it's it's the person who before like the main person comes out and gets everyone hyped. And I auditioned for oh. that. Oh, I, I, it was a contest. And so because I didn't understand what a hype man is, this was why I won, because I don't know. If you don't know the rules, you don't know what's good or bad. You just do things. And that's like a great metaphor for life. Okay, so hype a hype man, man is... Is Keegan Michaels okay? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, yeah, exactly. He he could be well, you know. In in some ways, he was like when they had the sketch of Barack Obama and the anger translator. Almost, I feel like he was kind of like a hype man a little bit. He was right, uh, maybe a little. But, oh, flavor, flavor, great example of a hype that's man. That's it. 
And yes. it's always, is it like a way to perform with the different hip hop artists and, and rappers as it says here, as it says here, or is it for pretty much anything that you do beforehand? Mainly I, I, I associate it with hip hop and with hip hop artists. I'm certain that you, if you are like a cupcake baker and hired a hype man, this could also work, which sounds like a great premise for a TV show. <laughs> Ah, so that explains the beatboxing. Okay, so this is just something that you kind of picked up while you were doing this with the, with yeah. the other guys there. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. So you, you started with YouTube. That's interesting. Got it. And I did it, what, but bef before things were becoming what YouTube is now. So like, we're talking, Sean, like 2007. You know, this oh is when God. YouTube is just a place to upload things. It's like a it's, it's like Dropbox, except people can watch your videos. You know, it was not like a, hey, subscribe and comment, all of this junk that now is what everyone does. It was just a way to see, have people discover video, my things, in a very simple way. And you were just kind of uploading random things about, you know, about yourself, like the, your hype man videos. And, and then did someone eventually discover you? I was, yes, I was uploading a lot of music. And then also I was uploading vlogs, video blogs, where I am trying to understand American culture and language. And that's exactly what happened. Someone found one of those, like for Pitch Perfect 2, um, someone found this one about potty pooping that I did. Uh, the, I overheard a conversation about Jennifer being a potty pooper. Okay. And it was very confusing to me. And this video is what was then sent to some of the, the PP2 peeps. Um, and that's how I received an audition. Oh, I see it here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is it, right? Yes. And this was made in 2016? <clears throat> oh, no. This is 2000. That one is like 2010, 2011. I will not shit face with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, this is, a, I mean, just warning you, there's a very confusing hole to go down if you watch those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you know what I'm going to be doing tonight. So. <laughs> oh, God. Apology in advance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So someone, just, someone ended up finding your videos and, um, and what, what was kind of the next step for you? Like, they, was it like an agent that decided to sign you and, you know, kind of what was that process for you? Like, and you, you were probably like just starstruck, right? You're like, what the hell is happening? It was on two things. One, absolute star, starstruck. And two, absolutely excited because this was what I was always wanting. So yeah. both things are happening at the same time. I still feel the imposter syndrome, but also it is what I want. So, you know, constant conflict in the brain, um, but so exciting. You still feel that way? You still feel some imposter syndrome when you're, I mean, I guess when you're in a set like Suicide Squad and you're with like Margot Robbie and you're with like some of the most successful actors, um, but you're also extremely talented. I'm sure they feel similar when they're around you in terms of how quick you are and your humor. Well, I will tell you, it's weird. I felt very comfortable in that, honestly, on that set, maybe more comfortable than other, like I shot something yesterday, which I felt... And it's a very small independent project. I felt like I was doing terribly. Huh. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, I felt different on su the Suicide Squad set. I don't know why, but, and, and look, it wavers. Sometimes it's strong, sometimes not. It's very confusing how my brain, or maybe all human brains work. They're not consistent. At least mine is not. But the Suicide Squad had probably bigger stars and actors. Maybe you have poster syndrome, which is the more successful people you work with, the more hey. comfortable you feel. <laughs> oh. When you're not with successful people, you're like, oh, man, like, what am I doing? You know? Oh, Sean, look at this. I like this. You go bump. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if this ever goes away, though. I mean, mm. in some ways, this is, seems to be a common thing for, for a lot of creatives and a lot of people that are making art. Like it might be the thing that makes you who you are in some sense, like the, the, the insecurity and the kind of the having, you know, kind of having the doubts in some sense, like, do you think that'll ever go away? Or do you think in some sense, do you kind of lean towards that and, and embrace it for your skill sets? It would help my brain if I leaned into it. I think I don't lean into it. I fight it every time like a child. Uh, but I agree with you. I don't think it goes away. I do think it's a reason why people that are trying to be creative are doing it and cannot help it. But 
Yeah, I mean, I've look, I've I've spoken to many people. My therapist currently, who's like, maybe just lean into it. Maybe just accept this is part of how your brain works. Let it happen, and then it's okay. Because the fighting part takes so much energy. Like, use that energy to make some dope shit. Mm. And what do you mean fight it? Like, you go home after an acting set, and you're just kind of like, why do I belong here? Is that kind of what you mean? I mean this, yes. Or even during, or even while you're mm. trying to create something, write something, edit something. You, I often am. Imp- in my great moments, I don't think of any of these things. I'm in the moment, which is why shows like these Conan appearances that I've done are so fun because usually I'm just right in it. I'm not thinking that's about right. anything. Um, yeah. It's the pe- yeah, you know, so that's when you feel like you're flowing. And it's when you start to give this voice too much weight, uh, which is to me mostly damaging. It's usually not almost never helpful. Yeah. No, I get it. Like, and, and, and I guess the difference of being in a set is you're with in other people, right? There's, yes. you're not just filming one interview and then you get to go home. This is an all day, maybe multiple months you're hanging out. So in some sense, like you're really getting to know these people. Uh, Cause I feel the same way. Like whenever I'm maybe in a, at a dinner or like, you know, meeting someone that maybe I just feel like, what is this person? Why are they talking to me? There's a part of me that's like, okay, like I don't want to get too close. I'm a little bit like avoidant that way because maybe if I reveal too much about myself, they'll really get to know who I really am. And when they do, they maybe they won't like me anymore. They won't respect me as much anymore. There, there's like this, all of these constant thoughts. So I never, I can't, I can't ever build like a, a real relationship with someone that I respect because it, you know, there's also the part of like never meet your heroes because, you know, maybe maybe they're not as impressive. And also maybe you're not as impressive when you really share more about yourself to them. Like it's, it's, it's just a constant thing, right? One thousand percent. Even what you were saying at the start is how I think people in all relationships, romantic or not, you like don't want to show everything because if they don't accept you, then you're screwed. Right. So if you are at your most vulnerable and then people are like, nah, no thanks. That's terrible. And that's why I think acting can be a very difficult job because mm. these, an actor, these people must put everything on the line, but then also ignore that it may not be quote accepted. You know, it may be in it's, it's not really why people are accept or quote reject you for a job. There's so many factors but when you really do it all and then don't or not said, hey, you have the job. That's a metaphor for everything in life. Like you don't, it's very difficult to be very vulnerable and then still live and be okay with not getting what you want from your vulnerability. Very tricky. It is, yeah. And particularly for you as, as an actor or anyone, maybe even a stand-up comedian where you yourself is the product. You're not yeah. building a, a business with a different <clears throat> identity, a different brand name. You're, you yourself, you're going up there. Well, for me, I have to make it exactly what you said. It has to be a product. It has to be something external. Otherwise, it's too difficult. Yeah. You know, you can't just, I mean, you can do this maybe once you are having the job. Or if you're a musician, you're like, I need to make this music. It only works if I'm vulnerable when I make it. That's great. But man, if everything is personal, how can you survive? I think it would just be too difficult. You know, you need some earmuffs, some, some emotional yeah. <laughs> earmuffs. Do you find that acting, even though you are putting yourself out there, in some sense, like you're acting as a different person, meaning like you, you're not playing Flula usually, you know, unless you're at an interview, but you're playing someone at the Suicide Squad or you're playing a different character at the Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like, does that help in some way? And, and you know, in that sense, like, does it actually, is that a relief sometimes because you're not just, you're not super vulnerable in yourself. You're just totally into this new character, this, this identity that you have to create for yourself. Exactly it. Yeah. If you can externalize it from you personally, but still do all of the things that are real for you inside this new vessel, then that's how I work. Uh, yeah. It's the only, really the only way to function uh, in those in those scenarios for me anyway you can yeah. still be very personal but yeah just you have to just forget it's you and also just that second voice needs to go somewhere else go eat a go eat a cupcake 
<laughs> Call me the gecko. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or beatbox with the elephant. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, and what what are you kind of like in the set? Are you interacting with people, or do you have like, or do you just kind of like to have your own space and and kind of unwind uh, after after a big set? Like, what's kind of your dynamic like when you're in a different set? It depends on the role and uh, just my relationship to those people. If I know the role is like fun and insane, usually I, I like to also do be more loose like that, which is part of my personality anyways, uh, right. when, we're, when you're not shooting. If it's other things, I'm, I'm probably, I usually am more quiet uh, just to kind of not, because it can be difficult to switch. Um, some people yeah. I've seen can switch immediately. I'm, I'm, cannot do that yet maybe eventually right right so you're kind of more just um you want to be in the zone so you you kind of like your own space because you want to you know that at any moment you're going to shoot again right so you have to kind of stay in that character while you're still there well yes because you know there's a hundred people also working so they're just waiting on you now so like just my german efficiency is don't no be ready so when they're when they are ready you just knock this out and you're not the the bottleneck for this whole process so what, what's it been like with, you know, with, with the pandemic and, and shooting a movie? Like I, I've got this, uh, yeah. this, uh, this crew that you got, I mean, some one badass crew, by the way, you got John Jesus, Cena, uh, James Gunn, you've got Idris, uh, Idris you've got uh, Sylvester, Margo. Stol- Margot Robbie. Oh, no, I mean, <laughs> holy, talk about imposter syndrome. I, I'm not even in the movie and I have imposter syndrome. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so what's it been like with the pandemic now? I mean, this is all kind of a strange new experience for, for everyone. What, what's, the, what's been the biggest change and kind of like what's, what's the dynamic been like for, for you guys now that you're um, you know, doing a lot of things, things virtually? Does it change any of it? Kind of the, the experience and the dynamic and how the movie's made? Well, we finished the film right before the pandemic began. So, and there were no reshoots. So all of the actual filming was this pre, was the pre-pandemic. The promotion, you know, usually there are press junkets and in-person events, but we've had zero of these. So hmm. that has been very weird. Um, we are hoping, uh, it looks like the premiere, you know, I guess you never know with, with the health stuff, but it looks like we will have a, a physical premiere, which is exciting. And everyone who I think is in Los Angeles will be there. So that would be very fun, but man, it's weird. It's strange to connect with humans. We're all doing it. You and I are doing it now, but yeah, yeah. It, this digital human connection thing is weird and is, you can't replace actual physical connection so it's the best yeah. we can do and oh god i'm excited for this to be done but i also feel like you shine in that in-person interview yeah. format you're like a very physical comic and you've got the, the character and the, the timing is so important for the way you interact like Con- your, your interviews with conan are one of my favorite and i'm pretty sure these <laughs> are like with the most viral ones as well like what's and I've seen your Instagram post, like you're, you're always posting stuff with Conan. Like, it seems like you guys have built oh. a pretty good relationship. Like what, what's the history there kind of like from the beginnings of how you guys met and how it's built over time. And, and, and what's kind of the relationship like today? We met um, because I think one of his producers just suggested that, that he interview me. And then we immediately had a, a very great connection. I invited him to Germany and then like three weeks later, we flew to Germany together, which was, I mean, just like amazing. That. Just like wow. that. So confusing. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I love, I love him so much. And I think he and I do connect in a very fun and insane way. Um, and I just, he's so fun to work with, man. He's just uh, so hyper intelligent and kind and understands that I'm a very large idiot. And I think he takes joy in translating my idiocy to people, which that's so fun. Count me in. Well, you've got Conan, who's like, he went to like, what, Harvard? And like, you know, he's, he's, he's a crazy intellect, but he yes. obviously plays more of the comic character in some sense, just to be, you know, more, you know just to play that role, of course, as a, as a, as a host. And in some sense, I feel like it's similar for you. Like you have this crazy character, but I feel like you're very like, intellectual as well in terms of how you approach 
things. Like, am I, am I wrong here? This is kind of our first time meeting and you, you yeah. obviously have a very private uh, uh, life, I guess. Closet. In sense. Yeah. <laughs> and a closet with, with an elephant, not yeah. super cl- <laughs> private, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, m- maybe I, what I like is I know he often plays that character. So I, I try to see, can I be even, can I, can I out stupid? Can I force him to correct me? That's instead right. of which play, i think is so the role i love it i also think he enjoys it um, but also generally i don't really know what's happening you can just connect with someone and know if it will be fun or not and with him it's always fun um but yeah and dude yeah i lo- i enjoy very much being a little bit of an enigma that's just fun to me and not just the band enigma which is also good yeah, yeah, and he's going to what HBO, HBO Max, or just HBO in general now, which I think will give him a little bit more freedom to take a little more risk. And you know, I, I'm curious to know like what you, you guys would be able to do if you if you were to go on a show now with HBO and just it being more R-rated and being able to do kind of whatever the fuck you guys want at that point, you know? Man, me too. Yeah, I. Uh, it- Anything he wants, I'm there. Just uh, even if it's just, hey, swing by and pick me something up from CVS. Great. What do you need? <laughs> NyQuil. Excellent. Be right back. I love it. I love it. Um, so you, you've got a lot of things that you're you're working on. I mean, acting. Would you say acting is your main focus, and that's kind of your end vision, or is it like have you pursued like comedy? Obviously, you do music. You you you've got a. Uh, pretty active DJ profile, I guess you create content. Like what's kind of the North star for you? Do you just enjoy doing all of these things at the same time? I do enjoy them all. I think that the dreams are to continue to release music, which I am. There's more music coming out. Yeah. I think what kind of music, by the way, what, what kind of music are you, are you focusing on? It's, I would describe what's coming out now as a blend between modern EDM and 90s dance music like CNC Music Factory or Salt and Pepper um, or, you know, like 90s German Euro dance combined with today's EDM would be what's coming out next from me. Um, so I'm excited about this. And yes, to answer your question, the music and the acting to me are really fun. I think the third step or third phase for me would also be to begin to produce things, to sell mm-hmm. uh, some TV shows, uh, while also still uh, pursuing fun acting and voiceover stuff. Oh man, I love voiceover so much. Yeah, you you'd be really good at the voiceovers for sure. I mean, what uh, what kind of things would you want to be producing though? Is it like do you have a particular passion for you know things particularly around educating people around Germany, or is it just kind of really anything that floats your boat that's funny to you? Any, or yeah. any boat floats? Yeah, any boat floats. I I would like to. Um, do something that's like in the vein of uh, this Bo Burnham Inside doc. I very much loved, uh, not doc, but uh, what would you call it? A special? Um, no. Something like this is something I'm working on. And then some non-scripted stuff. I think a, a fun, strange show that I'm hosting that's in the real world is very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just weird, bi- there's a few bio docs that I think I can play the character, even if it seems unbelievable, but there's a few that I'm developing now that we're hoping to, uh, to sell. And is it like a German character or is it, or is it going to be completely different? The whole thing is a comedy. Like you're going to play someone from Japan or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, man, I wish, uh, I need to, I need to study my Japanese. I only know like three words, um, <laughs> Yeah, man. No, it's it's like characters that real people from the, from history that are like obscure that I I think are, have fun stories to tell. So I'm we are working on that a little bit as well. Mm, yeah, I don't yeah. I don't know what your thoughts about like where Hollywood is going. Just given how you started with YouTube, right? So this is probably yeah. no stranger for you. But with so many different streaming platforms and and YouTube and Facebook now getting into into the content play like. Where do you see like the future of Hollywood going, you know, particularly with your role as a producer an actor, like is this conversations you have with other people in the industry? Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I think we've now, there's no toothpaste going back into the tubes. I think the streaming is not going away. I, I imagine that this would be like the big bang. Everyone spreads out. And then everything comes back together again. And then everything explodes again. So right now we have all of these platforms. 
I would not be shocked if they all start to, hey, it's a one package. You get your Hulu, and it's already beginning, but like mm -hmm. you get your Paramount Plus, your HBO Max, your everything is all one thing again. I imagine that this will be the next step. It's just, and then, but you know what? Then it'll split up again and new things. So that's what I think will happen. But I do love that there's so many homes right now uh, for amazing stuff, like th some of the best content you can imagine. There's almost, there's too much for me to watch, to be honest. It's it. It is a lot. Yeah. And, and I guess for you as a producer or an actor, like it, it's a win-win, right? There's no downside of this being expanded. The only downside is like, it's tough. It's more difficult to uh, get a lot of um, attention, which is helpful for more jobs. So like, you know, 20 years ago, if you are on Seinfeld, this would change your career. Um, right. Now, if you're on name your sitcom, it doesn't, it's great. But this is not the same. It's just a very different now. There's too many places for your eyes. And not just all the content, but then social media. It's a whole new, it's just, and then there's 10 of those. TikTok yeah. and Instagram yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Dating apps now, you know. Dating apps, how easy man. It is. Yes. Yeah. What's, what's, your, what's your scene like, dating scene like in LA? Like, what's that experience? How long have you been in LA for? I've been here for, uh, uh, back and forth for like 10 years now. Oh, 10 years. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how would you compare it to like the dating scene in Germany versus in LA? I mean, I'm not a dating man, to be honest. I like date my music. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline uh, asexual probably, you know, <laughs> just like hanging out with some whole notes and quarter notes. Um, and so I don't, I also don't know the online dating, what this is like. This is, must be a very fun, strange you never adventure. Use, you've never used Tinder, Bumble, none of these dating apps. You're never. no interest at all for you. I just know. I've just never done it. I think as a man who has lived on the internet, I find the internet a little bit, maybe not the place to find real things. Uh, so I enjoy seeing people in the face. And got it. Maybe it's a nice like bulletin board, like, hi, I'm this, oh, great. Well, let's immediately stare at each other in the face. Let's just, I don't, what is happening? Who knows what these photos are? Is this like from, you know, Google Maps, Google Earth? I don't know what these photos are from. Is this really your house? <laughs> just let's just see each other for real. Right, right. So you prefer more, more just meeting people in person, whether it's, uh, I guess you just don't have a lot of time. Ultimately, right? You, you could meet someone at the, at the, at the set or you could... Yeah. Uh, go to the at grocery the store, shop. Yes. coffee shop. You guys could both be going for the same avocado at the grocery store and you guys fall in love just like that. And then we split the avocado. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah, I know. I've done it before. Yeah, yeah. Of here course you have. You told me, you told me everything. Yes. Uh, yeah, the Brazil, the love car is a little bit bigger here, but it's okay. My hands are pretty <laughs> small here, so it's okay. That's fine. Um, so that means three people touch the avocado at once is what happened. It's a very okay. friendly city, a friendly country, I'd say that. Okay. Say that. Okay, Brazil. <laughs> I'm coming. There you go. Open invitation here for you, Fula. <laughs> um, got it. That's interesting. Okay. And you never feel like uh, lonely or do you see it more like as a, as a distraction then? Like, you know, finding a partner or dating, like you don't, you don't feel like you're missing out on anything or do you just feel like... <clears throat> At this point oh. in your life, it's, yeah. Oh, I've had romantic interludes. I'm just, Sean, I'm, I, as I said earlier, like being an enigma is so fun to me and making it unclear what is happening in my life. Maybe that's not good for my career, but it's really fun for me as a person. So like I keep it vague and that is just so enjoyable. I don't know why. Interesting. You know why? Wait, so it's because everyone pretends they're being open and it's all bullshit. All of these photos, mm. yeah, maybe you were happy for that eight seconds you posted this photo. That ninth second, you slipped and broke your nose. And then, yeah, okay, maybe you posted that too because you're a comedian. Whatever. It's all not real, so I would just prefer, ah, why? So I just keep it all vague and confusing. That's just, yeah. The internet is not a natural place to live. Can we agree? Like, this is a very new concept, and all of a sudden, this species that's been developing for millions of years now has this new technology that somehow demands we behave in a certain way. It makes no sense. Got it. And you're, when you're talking vague and ambiguous, you're talking more yeah. about how you present your life to other people on the internet or just other yes. people in general. But you yourself, you obviously 
are, I mean, you obviously assuming there's things that you want and you have goals and there's yeah. people that you want to meet. Of course. And the internet to me is a platform for entertainment in my mind. And so I would, I love to provide this, but I also like to be clear that it's entertainment. This is not like, you know, a deep thought of internal growth, you know, from flu line and sane man. Like I'm not the right mm. source for this. Your podcast, probably me, my Instagram feed is not where you go for these things. Go for Got the fun it. times or the confusion or the Germanity. Sure. Sure. And I think it's kind of what keeps the, the mystery and, and what people, it might even be like what keeps people intrigued, you know, in terms of what, what are the things that are happening in other people's lives. And um, maybe, yeah, it's, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> And talk to me a little bit about like what you, because you seem to post a lot of stuff around health stuff, like health nutrition, you're working out and stuff. Like that's obviously a big part of your thirsty, life, thirsty right? photos, thirsty photos, Sean. It's all thirsty. <laughs> thirsty photos. Yeah, you're talking yeah, about yeah. you being asexual, but it seems like you're attracting a lot of attention here. For the Here's what I want. You know, I'm trying to attract, I'm trying to attract action movie casting directors. That's it. <laughs> Cast that's me squad, to- baby. Exactly. You got Love, it. It worked. it worked. It worked. That's it. I've got my dad's genetics and my trainer, Paolo Maschitti's uh, regimen. Now let's just do some action films. That's what I'm about right now. It's very fun. That would be so fun for me to become an action star. Let's be real. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey. And how do you, what are some of the, the kind of the processes that you have uh, around like diet and nutrition? Like, are, are you doing anything particular for yourself? Like, yeah. Yes. And I will tell you first right away, I'm not, I'm spending money. Let's be clear. Uh, it's not cheap to do what I'm doing. So I like, I have like a meal plan. So someone comes and feeds me. They don't feed me. They just drop food at my door and I eat these delicious foods. I have a trainer. I've hired a very great Italian trainer oh, to damn. whip my buns Specifically Italian. Oh, you yes. specifically requested for an Italian. <laughs> Italian, and that's it. Sorry, you're not, you're not from Venice. Go away. You're it's fired. either I'm getting fat or it's an Italian trainer. Italian trainer, yes, very binary. Um, <laughs> but so I do those two things. And, and as I said, the third piece is I have very good daddy genetics. So, um, mm. but yeah, man, I'm posting these things. Just hire me. Make, uh, we need another Dolph Lundgren. We need another Schwarzenegger. Like, it's time. So let's make Flula that guy. Paint the the dream superhero you would want to play. If you could play any each any action movie kind of style, like where would you be? What what's kind of the the, the vision that you would have if you were to be the main action hero? Well, imagine Die Hard, except it's from the vantage point of Hans Gruber, if you know the film. Mm. Um, and so Hans Gruber, if you don't know, or if, if listeners don't know, is, uh, was the main guy played by Alan Rickman in, in, I would say, the best action film ever. Uh, and so I would want to have a whole film that, st- that tells the story except from his viewpoint, which I think would be very fun. But then also, look, man, Bruce Willis is a great example. He's not like super jacked and ripped and all of these things, and he's still a great action star. So you don't have to be these things. I've just decided I'm going to do that. So Put me in those 80s Sylvester Stallone movies. Red, what was it? Red Heat, Red Dawn, whatever it's called, Commando Schwarzenegger. Put me in those butt kick films. Make them fun. I think the other thing is these, these films, they were really fun, but wonderfully too, cheesy. Now it's too serious, right? Too serious. It's, it's very too serious. Too serious. And I can play that, of course. You know, look, yes. I'm German. We, we can be very serious. I want some just some fun, blow shit up, kick some buns, don't take it serious. You know, fast and furious, but on the autobahn with giggles here and there. Count That's why up. I love like Deadpool and and uh, what uh, oh, what's his name Ryan yes. Ryan what? what what's his uh, last name again Ryan Reynolds Gosling Reynolds Red, right Reynolds yeah Ra- always right, confusing yeah. confusing confusing yes but that's why I think that's why it did so well it was just so different and so unique but you know obviously you would bring a very different angle yes. to it right yes with all oh, the yes. Italian trainers and. All of all, them. All you would hire all of Italy, training. basically. Yeah. <laughs> the economy of Italy hired. would just go up. <laughs> Whoop. Yep, I would be holding, propping it up, just thanks to my bicep curls. I love it, man. Well, listen, Flula, I um, I want to respect your time, obviously, but this is this is a, a fun conversation, man. I uh, what 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 do you have coming up that people should know about? 
And um, yeah, where, where can people find out more about you? Obviously not Tinder, not Bumble. Not grinder, uh, not slammy and boomby and uh, farmers only. No, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, man. Well, the Suicide Squad is dropping soon, or maybe already has dropped from when you release this. Uh, I have music coming out, so find me DJ Flula. My name is Flula, like you have a flu in Los Angeles. F L U L A. Just Google me. And voiceover, lots of voiceover projects coming up very soon. I'm excited to announce Centaur World. I'm in that. A very great show on Netflix dropping soon. Amazing, man. You're killing it. And for DJing stuff, it's, it's on Spotify, right? Yes. Okay. And you're releasing music on a, on a, on a re- recent basis as well? Yes. I have a, one, something dropping, I think, in maybe 10 days. And then after this, every few, maybe a week. So I have a whole EP coming out. Amazing, man. No wonder. I mean, you're just so, so freaking busy with all these things that are going on. I it's love so it. so fun, man. Hey, say hi to Brazil for me. I'm so jealous. I will. I will. I'll send you some big avocado so you can feed your elephant. Mail me those. He's hungry in there, man. You is man. starving. You got to stop with the carbohydrates, man. I got to give him some, uh, some healthy fat, okay, from Brazil. Yes. I'll give him some guac. I'll make some guac for him. The export cost is high, though, so it's going to be $1,000, though. It's I'm fine. sorry. I'll send you Bitcoin. <laughs> It'll be fine. Or some ETH, yes. whatever you need. It's going up. I love it. There it is. <laughs> Thanks a lot, All Sean. Right. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Likewise, you too, man. Have a good one. All right, cheers, cheers.